All right. This may be the last video that you get from me. And this is um, my favorite way to end uh, the class. Uh, it's focusing on a topic that I think is very special. And I hope that you enjoy it as well. We're going back to our um, to our PowerPoint and going to finish out the PowerPoint on our argumentation. So argumentation is a process of build. I mean, a Rogerian argumentation is being able to see and articulate accurately both sides of an issue. OK. Um, The Rogerian model of argumentation was adapted from the work of American psychologist Carl Rogers by the composition scholar Richard Young, Alton Becker, and Kenneth Pike in their book Rhetoric, Discovery and Change, 1970. So it was a psychological, a psychology or a, um, a counseling strategy in which um, the goal is not necessarily winning, but understanding, right? Both sides are articulated carefully. Both sides of an issue are articulated carefully. Um, and in, I like to think of it in terms of a Boolean argument. And um, in a Boolean argument, you have two possible answers, right? A is true, B is false. Um, and so it's a dichotomy, it's a two opposites and never true and false can come together. So um, either or is are the only two options. But whenever you're dealing with people, me, you, and others, there aren't only two sides to an issue, right? And or, or let me put it a different way. Um, when there are two sides in an issue, it's not only one is right and the other is wrong. Is there a possibility where each side is partially true and partially false? Presenting both sides accurately is essential for this, for our understanding of this middle section in here. So we're looking to find the area that is overlapping. Um, let me go back to my final, my third point. These are the three main points of Rogerian argumentation. The third one is synergy means that no side wins unless both sides win. Synergy is, the, is where the work, the energy, the effort from both sides working together create a greater whole than the separate parts by themselves. And so it's very important in creating arguments. And to me, this is the most important kind of argument isn't just getting, you know, persuading you to change your mind and come over to my side, but for us to, to come to an agreement on, um, you know, and, and, a, and a joint solution here in the middle. Now, again, remember that it depends on the scope. It depends on the topic. There are some topics that um, are based on ultimate truth in which cannot be changed. Um, but most topics, when it comes to humans and our fallibility, there is room for us to be wrong and for someone else to be right. And so being able to be adaptable and find that area of overlap, I think, is extremely important. 
It says here, Rogerian argumentation is a negotiating strategy in which common goals are identified. Opposing views are described as objectively as possible in an effort to establish common ground and reach an agreement. And according to Richard Norquist and Thought Co. So that's, I think that's the best um, definition that you can find. Right? A Rogerian argumentation is a negotiating strategy in which common goals are identified and opposing views are described as objectively as possible in an effort to establish common ground and reach an agreement. Whereas traditional argument focuses on winning an argument, Rogerian model seeks a mutually satisfactory solution where both sides win, right? I, I'm not the only one that wins, but both sides win. The goal of Rogerian argumentation is to create a situation conducive to cooperate. This may well involve changes in format of Rogerian argumentation. When presenting your case in the case of the other side, the style is flexible with how you set up your information and how long you spend on each section. But you do want to be as balanced as possible. Spending an inordinate amount of time on your position and only giving lip service to the other side, for example, defeats the whole purpose of using the Rogerian style. The ideal format of a written Rogerian persuasion looks something like this. And he gives um, here a possible outline for a Rogerian argumentation. Number one is the introduction. Present the topic as a problem to solve together rather than an issue. So and this is much more accessible to your audience and probably more realistic in the kinds of goals that you may have. A lot of times, um, conversion or changing someone's mind is very one-sided. Um, and it's, it's, it's often, it lends itself to being a case of manipulation where you will go to any links to change the other person's mind. Whereas if you approach it from a win-win perspective, then, um, you see that you're not going to win anything unless the other person wins. And that puts you more in a servant uh, position. After um, you present your introduction, your first point would be presenting the opposing position. State the opinion of your opposition in an uh, objective manner that's fair and accurate so that the other side knows that you understand their problem or their position. Um, then you present context for that opposing position. Show as much background and research as you can to help them feel that they are understood and that the circumstances and the reasoning behind that position is valid. Then you present your position. Present your position objectively as well. Try to be as honest as you can about your biases so that it, it is clear um, that um, you're getting yourself out of the way and focusing on the other person and particularly the common ground between the two. Yes, you want to be convincing, but you want the opposition to see it with clarity and as fairly as possible, just as you presented its position earlier. Then you want to provide context for your position. Show the opposition's context in which your position is also valid. And then you discuss, finally, as, um, as you're asking for the um, 
for the agreement. You appeal to the opposition and show how elements of your position could work to benefit their interests as well. So you delineate the benefits for both and how working together is better than standing apart. Um, in conclusion, I want to share a couple of videos. So in my, um, in my, uh, In the fi final presentation, I'm going to be sharing a couple of examples, uh, a couple of other videos that I hope will be helpful to you for the last bit of time that we have together. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you, um, like I said, we're, um, we're coming down to the end of our time together. So, um, Let's try to make it as fruitful as possible. If I can help you in any way, don't hesitate. If you need um, a one-on-one -on -one conference um, at USM, at, I'm sorry, at William Carey campus, then be sure to set that up in the afternoon or um, or on you know, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, or Monday are, are really the the best times to, to try to do that. So take care, and God bless each one of you. Bye-bye.